Hey there! I have another knife book review for you. This time around we have Goins Encyclopedia of Cutlery Markings. This is one of those books that's described as a Bible for knife collectors or a must-have for you know serious collectors. I don't think I'll go quite that far because a lot of the information that's in this book can nowadays be gleaned off of the internet from different sources, knife forums and things like that. Uh, but it is a very valuable reference work for people that I think collect, trade, buy, sell vintage knives. It really does help you identify them, maybe date them, and get a little background on the cutler. This copy you're looking at is a brand new copy. Uh, it is, um, and I'll tell you later in the video how you can get your own copy, brand new if you'd like. This is the uh, 1998 copyright version or edition. There were a lot of versions or editions of this book. This one is kind of the um, culmination of all that came before it. It is the final one in that um, there'll never be another reprint or new edition as John Goines, the author, has passed away. So this book is the uh, work, 30 years of research and experience from John Goines, and these books were put together with assistance from his wife Charlotte, and uh, it really is invaluable and, and very, very helpful. We'll go through the book here in a minute and just look at the layout, and um, then I'll talk about some of the pros and what I think some of the cons of the book are, and again at the end here, tell you how you can get your own copy. Okay, just quickly, um, soft back cover, 11 by 8.5 inches, 311 pages of cutlery listings and a couple of things in the front. Let's just see how it's laid out. Uh, first of all, we have an introduction by the author's wife, Charlotte Goines. Uh, we have a foreword by the author himself. And then there are a couple of pages, this is uh, neat, a couple of pages of some knife inventions or discoveries. And so you've got a knife feature or development and uh, when it first appeared, who it's attributable to, and um, their country of origin or you know city. So for instance, uh, screw on handles. 1870, attributed to J and W and W H Miller, USA. Uh, celluloid was invented in 1870 by John Hyatt in the USA, according to this. But celluloid handles were first seen in 1879 by the Landis Brothers, USA. So you know, very interesting, uh, very helpful. There's a couple of pages of that, and then you get right into the cutlery listings. And this could book just could have been called. Goins Dictionary of Cutlery Listings too, because it's laid out just like that. Alphabetical order, A to Z. First entry is trade, AAA, one mark. <laughs> and just out of curiosity, what's the last? Zork, hardware company. 311 pages of cutlery listings and then it just ends. Okay. Let me start with the pros. Um, first of all, this is a very easy book to use because everything's laid out alphabetically like I just showed you. So if you get a knife and it says, you know, AAA trademark on it or whatever, you just go and you look it up and there it is. And so you're right to it. Um, if you collect some of the more um, popular American knives, you're going to find a pretty good amount of information. You know, obviously, case. Uh, there's just several pages of um, case markings. And they're shown graphically as a, and also just a line of text here. But you get you get dates, C for circa, um, and some other information there to kind of help you date your knife by the tank stamp. Like I said, a lot of information on case. Oftentimes with the bigger cutler you're going to get some company history, a couple of pictures perhaps, and uh, you know other related knife makers. Sometimes with the dates, uh, not with case so much, but sometimes with the dates you're going to find a G in front of the date. That's John Goines' guesstimate. He'll say in the uh, forward there that there's absolutely no documentation to back it up. That's his guesstimate based on his 30 years of experience looking at different knives. So based on the knife 
material, construction, who, where it came from, things like that. Style, you know, he's, he's for instance, here, case steel bowie knife. He's got a G in front of that. That's his guesstimate on the date range. So if you look at things like Case or Camillus or Remington, um, you're going to get a lot of good information. You're going to get images of tang stamps. You're going to get some company history, pictures. You're going to get, here's Cataragus right here. Not as much information on them, but they didn't use many different tang stamps. Um, you know, they do have in here some of their um, old company logos as well. So you're going to get good information there. So those would be my, my pros. Now how about the cons? Well, um, I guess the, the first con I would say is that the book is very U.S. centric, as you would expect it to be. But I was disappointed when I went to my Swiss Army Knife listings. For instance, let's go to Wenger real quick. So here's, here's the uh, entry on Wenger. That's it. You know, for a country, a company that was around since uh, 1908 to just a few years ago, that's not much. And really no tank stamp information. Uh, even if you go under T's and look for Tahara, you don't find anything. If you go under C, look for Catellary Swiss, you don't find anything. So that's a shame. Uh, Victorinox isn't much better. Uh, they identify, you know, Victorinox, Victoria, and Ellenox as tank stamps. But if you look for Elsener, Elsener Swiss, Army Swiss, nothing. So you're going to be disappointed, I think, if you collect some European knives. There is some information, a pretty good information here on Boker and some of the German makers. Uh, another con that, that bothered me a lot, I think, is about every tenth entry in this book uh, has no information at all. So if you, if you have a knife that uh, is stamped E, T, and C, and you get this book and you look it up and here you find it, you're all excited and you go, okay, E, T, and C. No date, no location, no information on the cutler, nothing. I mean, you know E, T, and C, you're looking at it on your knife. So I don't really even know why they put these entries in this book, quite a few of them. I think maybe it's just to show that yes, these are legitimate markings. Um, but I think if you have it on a knife, you know it's legitimate. And then I, I would say one out of ten like that, maybe one out of five just has nothing but a date, and oftentimes just a guesstimate date. So um, I'll tell you what I would have rather seen. I would have rather seen those just left out. You know, ENL, Syracuse, New York, nothing. So just leave it out. And then with the space that's freed up, uh, you could have made the listings more graphic. What I mean by that is if you have a knife that says Eagle Knife Company, patent pending, made in USA, how many lines is that on? Is it Eagle Knife Company first line, patent pending second line, made in US third line? Is there a two line version of that tank stamp that could help you date it? You just don't know. I went to look up Cataragus. I know there's a three and a four line Cataragus tank stamp. Um, that's about the only variation in Cataragus that I've come across. And I was real keen to see how those would help me date. But they had, they just had it just like this, just straight out. I don't know what's on first line, second line, or third line. So I think if they would have given us more graphic representations of, of the tank stamps like they did with all the case knives, uh, and they, you know, I know that would eat up a lot of real estate, but you could perhaps leave out some of these that, uh, that he really didn't have any information on. Okay, so I don't want to end on all those negative notes because it really is a good book. Uh, this represents 30 years of research and work from uh, John Goines, and God bless him because if he hadn't done it, we wouldn't have this. And uh, it, it could be an invaluable resource if you collect vintage knives. You're not going to sit down and read through it, uh, but as you need it, you're going to go get it over and over again. I think it's going to be just an uh, invaluable source to help identify and date knives. I know I'm looking forward to using it through the years. Uh, how to get your own brand new copy? Well, go to knifemagazine.com. Knife Magazine claims to have the last remaining stock of these books. New old stock. Uh, they said when they're gone, they're gone. There won't be any other editions or 
inventory because John Goins is no longer with us. Uh, they're selling these at I think at a very fair price of $27.95. Shipped to me here in the U.S. Media Mail. That was an additional seven dollars. So for $34.95 to my door, right at 35 bucks, I got this book, brand new. You can find other copies of it being sold used. Uh, typically, the sellers want you know $45.50 and up for it. So go get yourself a new one if you're inclined at the lowest price available. That's Goins Encyclopedia of Cutlery Markings. Thanks for watching and have fun collecting.